Test. Good morning. Test. We're going to make more than one announcement of this, but for those of you that are already in the church, today's Mass is a special Silver Jubilee Mass for Father Vidal, who used to be our pastor here. As a result, this is an English Mass, and we're singing all of the songs today in English, except the Mass parts are bilingual. So you have a music program available to you that will have all of the music in it for today. Not only the mass parts, but the songs. So if you do not have this particular flyer handout, please see one of the ushers or they're at the entrances as you're coming in. And we appreciate active participation in the sound that we joyfully praise the Lord no matter what language we're singing. And the handout will help you do that if you're interested in having one. Please find your way to getting one, and the ushers can help you. Thank you. Mic test. See. 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 See.
Good morning. Welcome to the 11 o'clock Mass. Today we have a special joyful celebration planned for the Silver Jubilee of Father Vidal, who used to be our pastor at this parish. If you're new or visiting, welcome. We're so excited to have you. But as a courtesy to our service, we would please invite everyone to silence, turn off your cell phones and pagers, and please refrain from chewing gum. This is an English mass, but we are singing the mass parts in bilingually. You have a program available, and the ushers can help you if you don't have one, that has all of the music for today. And if you prefer reading out of your music issue, the numbers are posted as usual. We are also joined by the Knights of Columbus, who will be processing this morning. And we would think and understand that we have Father Vidal as the celebrant, and he is assisted by Deacon Doug and Deacon Carlos. Please stand. Magandang umaga. Dzień dobry. Buongiorno. Guten Morgen. Let's begin this Holy Mass in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins 
and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs>
Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshiping it, sacrificing to it and crying out, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. I see how stiff-necked this people is, continued the Lord to Moses. Let me alone then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord, his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with such, with such great power and with so strong a hand? Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. In all this land that I promised, I will give your descendants as the perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in his punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. The word of the Lord. Create for me, oh God. Hey. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am grateful to him who has strengthened me, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he considered me trustworthy in appointing me to the ministry. I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and arrogant, but I have been mercifully test treated because I acted out of ignorance in my unbelief. Indeed, the grace of our Lord has been abundant, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of these, I am the foremost. But for that reason, I was mercifully treated, so that in me, as the foremost, Christ Jesus might display all his patience as an example for those who would come to believe in him for everlasting life. To the King of ages, incorruptible, invisible, the only God, honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. With A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and the scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them he addressed this parable. One man among you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, will not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go after the last one until he finds it. And when he does it, he sets in and his shoulders with great joy, 
And upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my last sheep. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who have no need for repentance. Or what woman, having 10 coins and losing one, will not light up a lamp and sweep the house, searching carefully until she finds it? And when she does find it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found the coin that I lost. In just the same way, I tell you, there will be rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. It is a great, incredible, awesome, amazing joy to be here with you today as we have come to celebrate those 25 years of priestly service in the church. It's been an awesome experience. And the gospel today talks about two beautiful parables, chapter 15 of the gospel of Luke. So who was Luke? Luke was a person inspired by God to write this beautiful story about Jesus. And one of the main themes that we find in the Gospel of Luke is discipleship. For Luke, it's very important that all the followers of the Lord Jesus are going to follow him and they are going to go straight to Jesus. There are a few characteristics in the Gospel of Luke that we don't find in any other Gospel. Luke is going to make sure that Jesus is on a journey and he's going to Jerusalem. And the reason why Jesus is going to Jerusalem is because the sacred events are going to take place there. What are the sacred events? The passion, the death, and the resurrection of the Lord. But he also wants to make sure in his gospel that the disciples are going with Jesus to Jerusalem. But that's not the only thing. We also find lots of many other themes that enrich the gospel. And actually, we find the theme today in today's reading. Two parables. And those parables, actually, they are not um, used in the ancient times in the Bible only. Many rabbis, many teachers used parables in many religions to teach their people. So what are parables? We find parables in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Parables are short stories. And those short stories always will have a message. What is the message? The kingdom of God. But the kingdom of God is something so big that the kingdom of God, every time that Jesus is delivering a parable, we always find a theme. And in this parable, the theme of those parables that we read today are about the mercy of God. Other themes that we find are going to be salvation, justification, we are going to find justice, we are going to find many other themes in the parables. And all those things really express the content and the core of the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, mercy. So what is mercy? Do you miss this? So mercy is experiencing God's love. It's a very powerful, amazing thing. 
And one of the things that happen is that God's mercy is always there for us. God always wants to love us, no matter what. But the problem about mercy is really us. Because we don't want to be open to the mercy of the Lord. And one of the reasons why we, want, we don't want to be open to the mercy of the Lord is because of sin. Really sin blocks our hearts, blocks our minds, blocks our existence. And it doesn't allow us to experience God's love in our lives. But there is always a way to work things through. And how does it happen? The way that it does happen is that you have to recognize that we are sinful. That we are broken. That we are wounded people. That we're not perfect. And we, do, we have to recognize that because that's the first step. And that is called humility. Recognizing your weaknesses, your brokenness, recognizing that you are not the best person there is, then you are allowing God to come into your life. It's a very beautiful experience, and it takes lots of humility, lots of it. You have to humble yourself before the Lord. So let's talk about some of those things that really hinder us from experiencing this incredible love that the Lord has for us. So I'm going to speak about some of those things, and I'm sure a lot of you are going to relate to those things. People get addicted to many different things. So let's talk about some of them. Sex. Money. Broken relationships. In my 25 years of being a priest, I have seen many people that don't talk to each other anymore. Siblings, when their parents passed away, they fight over stupid things. And that's the last day they speak to each other. Anger. How many of you here today are angry at someone in your life? Might be your spouse. You might be sitting next to the person that you have never been able to forgive. And you live with that resentment in your heart. And you live a very miserable life. Pretending that you love them, but you don't. How many of us are people that are very, very broken? In the gospel today, we hear that Jesus goes out to find what is lost. Because this is who this God is. He searches. He seeks out people. He wants to find you. 
The only problem is that you allow him to, found, to find you. Are you ready to take that step? Are you ready to let him find you? Are you ready to meet the Lord? You don't have to do anything. The only thing that you have to do is to tell him, Lord, I am here, I'm broken, I am hurt, I am wounded, I'm not perfect. Here I am. Lord, expose your hurt to the Lord. And he will come and he will heal you because he's thirsting for you. He hungers for your friendship. He wants to heal you. He wants to make you a better person. That's all. That's mercy. That's compassion. That's love. In fact, as I walk around, I see faces in this church that are struggling with many different issues. Some of them I have mentioned, others I haven't. But you know very well, deep inside, what those issues are. And you know what? The Lord wants to love you. And the Lord wants you to feel and experience his mercy in you today. The only thing that you have to do, really, is to open yourself up to Jesus. He's constantly, constantly, constantly desiring to love you, nothing else. It's really up to you to say yes to the Lord. Healing is a process and it takes time. And one of the things that you are going to experience when you <clears throat> are open to the process of healing in your life it's an incredible peace that nobody can give you. If you really feel peace in your heart, that's a sign that Jesus has healed you. As I walk around, I see faces that haven't been to confession for a very long time. One of the powerful things that confession does in our church is an incredible liberation. When you confess, and that's part of the healing process, and also part of experiencing God's mercy in one's life, is that when we expose our demons, we all have demons. When we expose our demons, we give the victory to the Lord Jesus Christ because he has conquered sin in us. The day that he suffered, that he died, and that he rose from the dead, it is his victory, not ours. And that is the incredible thing that the Lord Jesus did for us. Then, as you confess your sins, light 
comes into the darkness of your soul. As you confess your sins, you give in, you're conquering evil in your life. You're conquering darkness. You're conquering all those things that you cannot master. But it's God who does it. It is his power. It is his love for you and for me. Nothing else. And that's all that matters in life. He's looking for you. He wants to reign in your heart. I hope that you will allow him to touch you, to transform you, to shape you, to mold you, to fashion you into a being that you have never imagined to be. That's what the Lord wants. This Lord that we profess, that we, fight, that we proclaim as Jesus is the best thing that God has given us. It's beautiful. It's powerful. Let us be seduced, be duped by him. Because the only thing that he wants, really, is to love you. And if you have never experienced God's love in your life, tell him, ask him. Lord, you know what? I don't know. How does he feel to be loved? I want to be loved. By you. Amen. Amen. I didn't hear it. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father in heaven, we come this morning to offer our prayers and our needs. And so we pray.
This mask is suffered for the intentions of Lori Rosaline and victims and families of 9-11 attacks. For these intentions, let us continue to pray to the Lord. This Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Elizabeth N. Cox and Pauline Taylor, and for the intentions of Father Gustavo, Gustavo Vidal. For these intentions, let us continue to pray to the Lord. Lord for the Church, may God guide and strengthen her effort to spread the Gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. For an end to violence and terrorism in the world. May God peace prevail in hearts everywhere. Let us pray to the Lord. For the safeguarding of all human life, for from conception through natural death, let us pray to the Lord. For police, fire, amps, and EMS and military personnel who daily protect us and their families who await their safe return home. May God's protection and comforting presence be with all of them. Let us pray to the Lord. For the Commission Stephen ministers, caregivers in our parish community, may the light of the Holy Spirit guide them to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, the cure giver. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who have died, including James, Jim Do 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 Doherty, and from whom Our Lady of Grace candle burns this week, may God welcome them into the eternal peace. Let us Pray to the Lord. Lord For those intentions we hold within the silence of our hearts. And for all of this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord Jesus, we present all those prayers through the intercession of our Blessed Mother and Jesus Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
kindness accept this your servant's offering that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ascended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis R. Pope and Oscar R. Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy 
that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Pescador Hombres, number 496.
One bread, one body, 337.
Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O oh Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Could you please be seated one minute? It may be two. Who knows? Good morning, and Father's right, it's more than two. This is from the diocese that I am to read to you today. The Eucharist is a source and summit of Christian life. The reason why we gather together every Sunday is not just for the community or for the spiritual lessons that are taught during the homilies. Those things are good and necessary, but the reason why we are able to gather in the first place in the first place is the Eucharist. The Mass is built around and builds up to the moment when we all participate in the body and blood of Christ. You may be hearing this for the first time, or for many, you have heard this sentiment so frequently that it doesn't matter much to you anymore. But we must realize at the heart of the Catholic Church is the Eucharist, because it unites us to God by allowing us to participate in his sacrifice together through the Mass. We can only understand the gift of the Eucharist if we can understand why we gather together at Mass. While we, sec excuse me, while we celebrate the Eucharistic revival within the United States, the Diocese of Salt Lake City will be presenting a series of brief reflections on the Mass. These are four minute presentations and they are meant to be a mini class on the mass. We will walk through the entire mass over this series of reflections and we will begin to notice that every single detail of the mass, even those that we may not be familiar with, point to and lead to us to find the full meaning of the Eucharist. If you have ever wondered to yourself, why do we do this during Mass? Or what's the purpose of having that in Mass? Why can't we do this in Mass? Then hopefully these reflections will answer these questions, all while explaining that every part ultimately leads us to understand and appreciate the Eucharist. We will discover a harmony between the components of the Mass and the presence of Christ throughout the history of our faith. St. Augustine once addressed God by calling him beauty ever ancient, ever new. This description is equally appropriate when describing the Mass. The Mass itself is not new. Christ himself instituted the Mass at the Last Supper and handed it down to us, but we can experience his words and actions at the Last Supper now in the present moment. Because the Mass comes to us directly from Christ, each part of it indicates how we can find him, love him, know him, and share him in this world. The Eucharist is the real presence of Jesus Christ, who is among us and within us. Everything about the Mass revolves around it, and Christ gradually reveals his presence more clearly and more deeply to us throughout the Mass until the moment of the consecration. We in turn become Christ to others when we receive him in our hearts and we are called to go forth. Through these reflections, you'll learn new things about the Mass. You'll find that the Mass allows us to relive the entirety of salvation history from the sacrifice sorry, from the fat sacrifice rituals of the Old Testament to the wedding feast of the Lamb in the book of Revelations. If you're new to the Mass, you might have noticed that we use all of our basic senses, our sight, our sound, our touch, our taste and smell during the liturgy. All of that helps us to unite our souls to God through our bodies. This is because Mass is actively lived. 
Through our bodies and in the Mass, we adore God. We express our remorse for our sins. We thank Him for all He has done, and we ask Him to reveal Himself to us. Eventually, over time, together, Ultimately, this leads us to the moment when he does reveal himself fully in the Eucharist. But the process, as we will come to learn through these reflections, is gradual and constant throughout the Mass. Thank you. Just before the final blessing, I just want to... Thank you for being here, for giving me the opportunity to be or to have been your pastor. I left this parish 12 years ago, and we had the opportunity to do many different things, including the remodelation of this beautiful place. But we didn't only do that, but also we built up the community and relationships, not only among the Catholic community here in town, but also with other people uh, of other faiths. And I believe some of those people are here today. And so they were part of the um, interfaith group that we had over 12 years ago. Tom and Patsy Lam, are you here? And I know that there is another person, Rabbi Helene Aimbinder, are you here? Could you please rise? Thank you for being here and sharing this moment with us. We had an incredible opportunity many years ago um, to work and to build bridges uh, with not only other uh, religious associations here in town, but also with civil authorities and many others. And I was not the only one involved in doing that, but also there were committees and there were people that helped me incredibly. They did an in incredible job to do this. I also wanna thank the servers, the deacons, the choir, the ushers, the Knights of Columbus, the lectors, and everybody else that was involved in this beautiful celebration. It's been a blessing. It's been an incredible, awesome experience to be a priest. It has been times uh, where things are not good, and other times that had been very good. I am a broken person. I am wounded, just like you. And God has used my brokenness and my woundedness to touch many lives and to bring uh, to Jesus many people in my, during, my, during my life. And I thank the Lord for that opportunity because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, what matters is a relationship with the Lord. Nothing else. Nothing else is to come to know him and to love him. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will be in Kusi Hall after Mass for whomever wants to say hi to me. Thank you. And there is a reception for Father Vidal that every single person is invited to in Kusi Hall. So please come by and say hello. As we conclude our Mass, we have the opportunity of going forth, seeking God's mercy and providing mercy to others as a final remembrance of 9-11, the sacrifices, the death, 
and the opportunity to extend that mercy as we go forward. We're going to be singing America the Beautiful. It is number 745. God bless America. Have an awesome day.